go ahead and buckle yourself a seatbelt because the phone call that we're going to be talking about today between Leticia and Al Stalk is going to have you punching air. Let's go ahead and get into it. Hello everybody and welcome back to the sofa which is right behind me there with our mascot Mr. Roscoe blended into the reporting live from my sofa blanket and my name is Paul. Now as I said in the introduction what we're going to be discussing today is the phone call between Al and Leticia. Now, if you haven't been following this case, this is the case against Leticia Stauk. She is accused of taking the life of her 11-year-old stepson, Gannon, and that's what this is about. So they recently played like a bunch of phone calls between them, right? Um, and I'm going to be focusing on one segment of a phone call. And honestly, I, I was like, let's pick out the highlights to talk about. And literally every five seconds of it, I was like, this the entire phone call, right? So it's going to be a lot is what I'm getting at. However, that being said, just remember when we're listening to this, the, these are just my opinions. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a lawyer. None of that fancy stuff. So these are my opinions and that's it. I would love to hear what yours are. Drop them down in the comments. I do read them and use those as like feedback and that kind of thing to ponder on and then come to the next video with. Okay, so if you're new to the channel, this is how this is going to work. Usually what I will do, not usually, but what we're doing, right, is I'm going to put up an audio clip, because that's what this is, of a part of the phone call, and then I'll pause, I'll put some commentary in it. So this is that style video. If you're not, if you're looking for the straight through phone call, this ain't it, okay. i uh, just go ahead and tell you that right now. Okay, that all being said, like I said, Buckle those seatbelts up, y'all, because let me tell you what, this one had me seeing red. That would have been already from when he cut his foot. I've already told you that, okay? I told you that his arm from him getting burned was bleeding so I it was his foot. I've already told you that. Okay, you're lying. You're lying. Stop. That's a lie. Change it again because that's a lie. Here's the game we're going to play. Every time you lie, I'm going to call you out. You can't bleed that much from a burn. You can't bleed that much from a burn. You can't bleed that much from a cut on your foot from a two by four. I'm not stupid. You're lying. Go ahead. Change it again. You're lying. Aim and brother. Now, for one second, I thought he was going to say, we're going to play a game every time you lie. I'm going to take a shot. And I was like, don't do that. You'll be dead in five seconds flat from alcohol overdose, okay? Now, one thing to listen to this through the lens of is, number one, uh, what's in Al is on the phone. He probably has like cops, the FBI, whoever they're with him, kind of coaching him what to say, trying to extract information from Leticia. She has come up with numerous stories and told him. And you hear some of it of, well, the blood came from this. It doesn't matter what kind of evidence there is. She is going to gaslight. She is going to lie. She is not capable of telling the truth, even in the face of extremely damning evidence. And like you heard Al say, he's not stupid. Cops aren't stupid. The FBI isn't stupid. They have found enough evidence to know this is not looking good for Gannon, right, at this point in time. Now, remember, he hadn't been found yet. So Al knows, though, a puddle of blood, all these stories. I mean, it's just, it's bad. So as we listen to this, and the frustrating part for me that I feel, honestly, just listening to it, but also, obviously, for Al, for Landon, for, you know, anyone that cared and loved for Gannon in his life, that she put them through with this, is to listen to her constantly lie, constantly deflect, and constantly gaslight and try and turn it around on everybody else. You said a plate side. A plate? A dinner plate? That Okay, that's what seeped through, Tisha. That means there was a puddle of blood on the damn carpet to seep through the carpet, an inch of carpet pad, and onto the concrete pad where it looked like it had been sitting there for days, okay? Now, one thing I think she also does with this is try to get information, because one thing that also to me was interesting is we know at this point that she knows exactly what happened to Gannon, right? Because she did it. Mind you, she's trying to say that she was temporarily insane. Yeah, ain't buying it. But listening to Al talk, of it, it, this, it seeped through all this stuff, right? She's trying to play it off like, and she'll come up with 10,000 different stories for how the blood got there, right? Uh, uh, his foot's bleeding, the arms from the blood from this, and blah, 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 blah. The fact of the matter is, imagine, well, think about if you've nicked your finger or something like that, right? 
I mean, it's, it's just the amount of blood that comes from that. So if you are bleeding to the extent that there is a puddle of blood that has made it all the way through the things that Al just said, this is not good, okay? And I would imagine at this point that they might have prepped him behind the scenes of, look, this is... This is not looking well. Yes, we hope we find Ganon, but we're just, you know what I'm saying? Like, because the FBI, these people, they have seen this before. And looking at all this evidence and then her lying constantly, it's like they immediately knew, right? They immediately knew. She had something to do with this. And I guess a part of it was just deciphering, was there an accident or not? But as her story kept evolving and changing, it became clear that it won't no accident. Fucking truth. Maybe you should ask the people who were there living because I never was there in a contaminated crime scene. Maybe you should ask this. Now, this part right here is going to be a common theme throughout that will literally have you coming to the, the, the computer screen or your phone screen whenever you're watching. This whole thing of contaminating the crime scene. Now, us having hindsight into all this of how much she has tried to nitpick and do this and do that it's interesting to see, see that she immediately started off with this like in the very beginning of the case the contamination all right good who did that who, so, who did it all right nice guess what guess what you're just telling on yourself now you're worried about you you're, you're worried about a damn loophole you're trying to find a loophole okay oh okay there's another loophole it absolutely kills me that her phone goes in and out like that. Oh my gosh. I mean, it just gets all over me. But just what Al said, you're telling on yourself you're looking for loopholes. And again, this is the part that also gets me with her or anyone that does these crimes and then takes this behavior is either their unwillingness to look at it or they're so convinced that they're correct and can talk their way out of it. They fail to neglect and specifically her in the situation it is not normal in this situation to be looking at loopholes and how and technicalities of how you didn't have anything to do this when you're even though it's her stepchild you know a child is missing um that's abnormal right but she doesn't seem to realize this all right there's another loophole all right there's three loopholes already I mean, my God, she's going to have a whole damn king-size crochet blanket knitted or crocheted, whatever it is, with all these loopholes she's looking for. All right. It's not funny to me that they let protectors with a child missing. Maybe they contaminated it. That's fine. Okay, fine. All right. So that's... So that's, that's like when I'm talking to you. Landon, Lena, Veronica, and me. That's four loopholes right there, okay? And this is the thing. Listen to her talk trying to come after the cops, the people, them on all this type of stuff, knowing the whole time what she has done. And even in the face of all this damn evidence, it's that her world is closing in and she is still trying to project everything outward and so vile about it. It just baffles me. All right. Yeah. I'm waiting. I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you. Quit lying. You just, you just told on, hey, between, between me and you, you just told on yourself because you just said they, they contaminated a crime scene is what you said. And it is interesting how she tells on herself throughout this because she'll let little things out. Here's the thing with Letitia. She literally has told so many lies that you cannot keep up with them. This would have been one thing if she had done one thing, one action, one moment, went with it, ran with it. And that was it, right? And then tried to keep up with that lie. But literally, everything that comes out of her mouth is a lie. And then she just comes up with lies and lies and lies and lies. And it makes you wonder, again, what was she like five years ago around the house? Like, can you imagine getting in a regular couple's argument with her over something? Imagine how much manipulation and lying she would do. That part baffles me. I, I just, I can only fathom what a toxic human being she is. We already heard from Harley, right? What it was like to be her daughter. So we got a glimpse of that. And so we see this was not something that just came on suddenly. This is an ongoing pattern for Leticia. No, I said you, I said y'all contaminated me. Y'all put it in there then. Oh, uh, we put it in there? Not that, do you? Okay. Do you? All right. So you see, here you go. Here you go with the spin game. Oh, you were all, you, you were on the cut foot and the burnt arm. Now it's a spin game, okay? All right, keep going with your spin. You're the one that you know the answer. And again, just listening to her talk, 
And, and thank God, I'm so glad we've got to hear these phone calls between them to hear someone calling her out on her BS. And again, I just sit here and think, what if they were arguing over, you know, a grocery bill or whatever, right? Um, or uh, you misplaced the keys or something basic, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to come up with something normal. She would make you think you're absolutely nuts. And, but that's what her personality, personality types do. And so hearing him say, oh, we're on the spin game now, we're on the spin game, you're trying to spin it around, is she can't even stop for one second. She literally is on to the next thing, on to the next thing, on to the next thing, and they're all lies. Yeah, that's freaking, uh, it's freaking, I know what the answer is. It's freaking Gannon's blood. It's Gannon's blood from a head injury. Now, how did he get a head injury? How did he get a head injury over there? And these basic questions like this, which are absolutely wonderful, I'm glad to hear them. It's Gannon's blood from a head injury. How did he get it? But again, she can't answer that. And what I have found when I've dealt with these type personalities in my own life or just watching some of the cases, and I'm not trying to say that I have dealt with someone that's done something like this, but I mean, we've all, well, I shouldn't say we all, I think a lot of us here, I'll talk about, I see in the comment sections a lot, where we've dealt with someone, a narcissist or whatever you want to call these people like Letitia and Lori and these, you know, Daryl Brooks and these people, right, that we watch here. And what I have always found with them, and I especially here listening to this phone call, is when their back is against the wall, they'll either do like a, a crying thing or a, you know, completely deflect because it's almost like they shut down when there's absolutely nowhere else to go. And I don't know what they call that. It's something when you like, when a narcissist, like it's some kind of anger thing with them where they just, you know, they cannot handle that, right? And that's what Leticia does here. And it seems to me, to me that her go-to is to then just switch everything around and start with a, what Al calls loopholes or blaming it on him or, oh, well, look at the cops. Because again, remember in her mind, she knows what happened. She already knows that she did this to Gannon. She already knows where his body is. She already knows what evidence is most likely there that she tried to clean up. And so all she can do is start trying to explain it away. But what she fails to realize is that that in and of itself is giving her away. You pushed the beds together. We've never pushed the beds together. You're lying. I have done it. But let me tell you something, Al. If you went in somewhere where there was blood and you were allowed to walk in there, maybe you did it. Maybe you did it. I mean, my God, just flies all over me. And just like Alice pointed out this basic stuff, we've never done these things. The most abnormal behavior that she seemed to do with us and then expecting everyone to believe her. Right. And this entitlement to it is the entitlement that gets me. Same thing with the Lori Daybell case going on right now. It's the entitlement to the opinion of others that just flies all over me. Oh, maybe I did, huh? <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did you just say you walked there somewhere to see it? Did you do it? Because you should, and if that was the case, what you're telling me is you shouldn't even have been allowed in there. Oh, 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 oh. I was in Oklahoma. That's what I got to say. That's my loophole. Okay. You want to try to pin it on me? Go ahead. Going to try and blame the father of the boy that she took out. I mean, I hope it's turned up extra hot where she ends up going. Tell me, tell me better than this. Just because I know you're pretty smart. Tell me better than this. So you admitted to me that you were allowed to walk in the post I'm seeing. No, I said I saw it. Don't twist my words. I saw it. I saw it. I love how she's like, you're pretty smart. I'm like, yeah, honey, that's why he's calling you out on all this BS, right? I mean, it just gets to me. And now this thing right here where she's going through, and again, just sticking to, you know, contaminated crime scene, contaminated crime scene. You know, now what we saw as the public later, once she was like apprehended, all this type of stuff, was just this whole mental barfing of what her rights are, you know, and how they're violated in this and a peanut butter sandwich. And, you know, I mean, you and name it, right? And so again, like this clip that we just listened to, literally all I'm thinking of is I'm like, oh my God, imagine if she was upset at home because, you know, whatever. Y'all supposed to go out to dinner, you didn't go, right? It must have been like climbing Mount Everest every single day to be in a relationship with her. You want to know, uh, you want to know who else walked in there? You, Gannon with a head injury, Quincy Brown, and a puddle of blood walked in there. That's who walked in there. So what do you think is going to happen? What do you, what do you think is going to happen when they find that boy 
and put all these pieces together, okay? And Al asked a wonderful question that I want to ponder for a second because this is one of the things I get hung up with on this case. Exactly what he just said. What do you think is going to happen when they find Gannon and put all the pieces together? Because that was my question as well. She is so steadfast of loopholes and I didn't do it and bring the family back together. It's as if she's confident they're never going to find Gannon. Because in my thinking, and again, I'm trying to apply my own thinking to her logic, and that's probably where the breakdown's occurring. I'm thinking this. I'm thinking I would not try and play this off and gaslight and be this confident unless I was sure they wouldn't find the body. Well, we saw where she disposed of poor little Gannon, right? It doesn't take a rocket scientist. I'm like, uh, girl, like that was going to totally be found, right? So... My next process, thought process is, what was she thinking? Was she thinking they would never find the body and therefore they could never pin it on her and it would just be a missing persons case and she would convince everybody to go back to thinking, well, that maybe Leticia, this happened to her and someone came in or whatever the case that she was trying to convince them. Anything other than her doing it, right? And then I guess because in my mind, I'm just like, I don't see how you could act the way she's acting without being in your mind confident that they would never find the body because she's lied so much and gaslit everything and twisted this and that. It's almost like, well, I mean, this would all fall apart if they find the body because... I mean, it's apparent without the body, right, of kind of what went down. Clearly finding Gannon's remains and then piecing the evidence together of how they got there, I mean, it was not a far leap, right? It did not take them long to figure all this out. And so that's what confuses me with that. I'm curious to know what y'all think down in the comment sections on that part, because I can't for the life of me wrap my brain around that part at all. Me. No, no. I didn't accuse you. I accused Quincy Brown, and and maybe there's a story, a part of this that's an accident. Okay, by the. Tom had injury to Gannon Jacobs' scalp. I don't know about it, or I didn't do it. Or why is it an or? Why is it an or? And this is what I'm talking about. First of all, you listen to her at the beginning, you know, accuse me. I mean, she's yelling this whole time. And this is how she's acting over something that we know she did, right? So that's what I'm saying. Like, just imagine what it was like to just live your daily life out with this woman. Okay, but then secondly, that whole thing that she just did there of the or thing, you know, there, there no uh, head injuries or whatever, or I didn't know about it. I mean, she's trying to cover all her bases. I against Quincy Brown. And he okay. Okay, good. I was walking sluggish when I cut my finger. Gator was walking sluggish after he had a significant head wound with puddle of blood on the floor. I've seen Gator walk sluggish. Okay, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, he was walking sluggish because he was hurt, and there was a puddle of blood on the floor, and it's probably his blood. I haven't seen no freaking evidence, but I guarantee you it's his blood because it all adds up, Tisha. And he was walking sluggish because of that, just like I was walking sluggish when I cut my finger off. You hit the nail on the head, honey. Now, again, when we listen to these descriptions and Al going through it, it's it's so, I guess maybe sobering as a word to use, maybe, I don't know. Um, because, you know, you just think of the video of Gannon talking about these things that happened to him. I mean, that poor little boy, right? This little boy did not deserve any of this. This was a monstrous fate that he collided with, right? Uh, at the hands of his stepmother, who had been his stepmother for a while, right? This is not someone who just got married, and I'm not saying that makes an excuse, right? Um... This is not someone who just got married a few months ago and then flipped the switch and was all of a sudden, oh my God, you know, I mean, this they'd been together for a minute. She had known Gannon for years. So that's the part where I'm like, it makes it just even worse to me, I guess. But then the whole thing of, you know, Al calling out, well, I was walking sluggish during this time. Now, again, as we go forward, this whole thing of walking sluggish, oh my god. I mean, the 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 loopholes that she's looking for with that bit are exhausting. I don't even understand. Like, you're talking, see, this is what's not making any sense. You're trying to say that he got hurt before. Yeah. I don't even know that he got hurt at Oh, why? Oh, you, I'm glad you caught yourself. So you're saying he, he got hurt Monday morning? I'm glad you caught yourself. 
No, again, I love him. Like, I'm glad you caught yourself because she does, right? I don't even know if he got hurt. And that's the thing that gets me. I'm like, you had to have these monstrous images in your mind because you did them to him. And just, but at every turn, at every single turn, she just, she covers up one thing with the other. You know, it reminds me of so many of these cases that we've looked at. And I want to say, I think her name's Susan Smith, the South Carolina mother that drowned her babies in the car uh, because the dude didn't want, I think there's multiple reasons behind it, but you know, that guy she was seeing uh, wasn't into having kids or whatever. And remember her getting on TV and in her interview and that fake crying, I want my babies back, you know, kind of a thing. The same type situation, obviously, of coming up with this lie, perpetuating it, a, f a false, um, you know, perpetrator type situation, that type thing. And so when I sit here and look at Susan Smith, I believe that's her name. I could have it wrong. Um, and then like Leticia or Lori or any of these people where they're constantly covering tracks. But as we all know, when you're lying about something to this degree, it's always going to catch up with you. Yep, I'm glad you caught yourself though. Hey, listen, let's stop, okay? Because this is going nowhere. We can we can fix this. No, I want Gannon. I don't want you in trouble. I I I'm blaming Quincy Brown, okay? I'm blaming freaking Quincy Brown. I want my son. Just fail to tell me how 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 we were supposed to be back the way in our American dreams, and you start screaming. No. In the because of my son, it's my son's blood all over the freaking house, okay? My son's blood. If it was... We were supposed to be back to the American freaking dream. I mean, my God. Now, the other part of this that gets me is where he's finally like, I, I don't want you in trouble. I just want my son. That's what she doesn't realize, right? And there'll be times where he's like, if this was Harley, and she'll try and pretend like, well, when I thought Harley was missing or whatever, I freaked out. And I'm like, oh, please. I do not see someone like her being able to care about another human being authentically at all. And then can we please talk about the whole Quincy Brown thing for a minute? I mean, y'all, did she not look for every single excuse in the book right i'm just like uh, constantly hearing this man now if you're not familiar with this this was like a case he was a wanted um uh you know what offender in this area she latched on to numerous stories of someone coming in and doing things to her and he'll talk about this here momentarily um at this point every everybody knows this is a lie right but they're just having to pander to her because if you heard also where he's like okay well let's calm down or whatever remember this is like a recorded phone call you know, there's people that are coaching him. They're trying to get information because they know the deal. They know she had something to do with his, you know, well, at this point, they didn't know he was dead, but they could probably put two and two together, right? Uh, they know that, but she has this key to this. She's over here worried about an American dream family lifestyle. And I'm like, honey, did you really think y'all were just going to move on with this? She was probably annoyed more than anything. If it was Harley's blood, you'd be screaming too. You're screaming, and it's not even your son. She called this blood in this cannon. I'm assuming who else's blood would be on the floor. And I do not think that she would freak out over Harley. She would pretend to be freaked out if it was her own daughters, right? Same way she was pretending to be freaked out over Gannon. Same way she got on TV and was talking about Gannon was a good helper. You know, oh, and did it. I mean, lying the whole time, right? And the same thing here. And then the, you, you assume it's Gannon's blood. And I'm like, girl, you put it there. You know this. And the fact that you were putting this man through this over his own son... I mean, next level. Okay, good. Yeah, you got me. I'm assuming. I'm making a serious, legitimate assumption, putting all the pieces together. That is my son's blood. Layla, hey, is, La is Lena cut up? Are you cut up? Is Harley cut up? No, Gan is the only one missing, and we don't know. So, yes, I'm assuming. Okay? I'm not cut up. I wasn't even there. I'm going to tell you this, Albert. You can tell me whatever you want to. We Now is the time when we fix this. Right now. Okay? Okay, and I'm telling you right now. You, you, you stop.
Now, like I said earlier, she latches onto this whole sluggish thing when he made the comment about him being sluggish on the video and will not let that go. Will not let that go. Well, now, again, in my opinion of it at this point, and this is a good time to talk about this too. So the last video I did on this, I made it in, and I did pin the correction to it, but I got too excited and messed the timeline up in my mind. And I was like, I'm convinced he was dead in the picture in the picture. Well, there's all this evidence, obviously, that says to the contrary, right? Of him like being known alive or whatever. So then I was like, wait a minute, that's right. I'm getting the timelines of all these cases mixed up in my head. And so then I thought about it more and all these comments and I'm like and then we're also reading y'all's comments and I was like you know what however she arrived at it I think she gave him the hydrocodone that night the night of Harley let's go down to say goodnight and that whole thing right and so then this whole sluggish thing they're going on and a couple of you made some good comments talking about y'all think that she tried to OD him which very well 100% could right and so now at this point God only knows what he had been through with her on top of all that right so and there's injuries going on this type thing so I think that she had probably done the beginning of the end had started for Ganon whatever triggered her to create this end of life assault you know um she probably gave him something to either try and OD him or make him sleep through the night or something right we we don't know uh and then the next day this happened and so for her to sit here and again he wasn't sluggish or maybe he was tired because he stayed up all night and this that, and the other it's like she knows what happened, but then lies to the exact opposite of it. It's almost like I would almost be trying to go with Al a little bit. Like, you know what? He was sluggish because we did blank. You know, that type thing. I, I would almost be trying to work with it a little bit instead of every single thing going the complete opposite because it just makes it so much more obvious that she's lying. Maybe he was a little tired for that part of it, but you can't assume Now this part creeps me out because I also sit here and think because she knows when and where and how the injuries occurred. Now again, she lies about everything, right? But part of me is thinking in the part where she says, you know, first of all, he was under my care. And I'm like, yeah, that's 100% the problem, right? But she's like, there would have been blood in your truck, you know, and all that kind of stuff. I'm just like, this is so scary because she knows what ex exactly what she did. And clearly some of the like life, um, what do you get? Like, uh, ending injuries that she caused to him probably kind of occurred at that point. And so there was that. Now I'm going to continue on for a minute about the last comment and the injuries that she did. Also reading the comment section was the whole thing of, yeah, I think it's a good general consensus, consensus that none of us believe the candle story, but we do think that she intentionally burned him or somehow or possibly tried to set the house on fire. Something, but I, basically we think, and I say we, a lot of the Sofa Squad in the comment sections of me, that she did something intentionally with fire involving Ganon. Now, whether it was intentionally like a hold your arms out or a I'm going to, you know, burn his blanket or whatever she was doing that she went off. And that was the beginning. It was almost like something was so bad she knew he couldn't live to tell anybody. Almost like she had gone overboard from what she normally does type thing. Uh, and again, those are just my opinions. I don't know any of that for a fact or whatever. I'm just kind of going off memory right here. Things that y'all in the comment section and piecing the puzzle pieces together to try and paint a picture because I think at the end of it also, my brain just wants to categorize it and figure out why. He was looking like he was drugged. Really? Ganon drugged. Really? Ganon drugged. Who knew? Well, pff, look at what they found in his blood system, Leticia. I told you I gave it to him on Saturday night. Okay, maybe. I don't remember that, but now you say you basically say you doped him up on Miralax. I already told you this, so don't try to correct me and tell me I'm lying when I, I know for a fact. Right? He was probably very tired. So 
so now you notice how, first of all, he's catching her and saying, well, you said you didn't give him anything, but then you gave him all this Miralax because of his stomach issues. And then she comes with, he was probably really tired. So she starts to soft change her story. Because by saying that to me, at least she's admitting that, okay, he was maybe sluggish on there. Or yeah, if you're interpreting him that way, it's because he was tired. Instead of just sticking by one thing, she has to kind of like make it a gray zone because the reality is, is that it is how he was. So if he walked out maybe a little bit tired, and you saw that, then blame me. Because you know why? We didn't go to sleep. So now he is tired and sluggish, and a minute ago he wasn't tired and sluggish. I mean, amen, brother, right? You can't even keep up with it. I hope whoever's there with him doing the phone call literally has like one of those big charts you see, keeping up and pinpointing all these lies to one another because it's exhausting just to listen to it. I mean, it's like you have to literally be like, everybody stop. Okay, we're going to write a name dissertation and try and map this out just on two or three of our storylines. Okay, what, what version of that is the truth? Because the boy was bleeding in the house. So how, where did the blood come from? Albert, I'm going to tell you once again. All right. You can say all you want to with these assumptions that you have. Okay. Cannon has already been bleeding from his foot. Okay. God, the way she talks to him, especially knowing that she's lying and gaslighting him, I mean sends something all over me. Y'all, I can't imagine. That's what I'm talking about. Imagine living with her. But I mean, this right here, you cannot deny this is Gannon's blood. What, where was head injury from? I've already told you. It was from his foot. Now, the excuse she came up with the foot, I mean, this is what gets me. It's like, honey, I mean, you see how much blood is in the house, right? This is not normal. For the injury she's trying to claim that this is coming from, that no. She's going up against all these people who deal with this on a daily basis, and she's going to tell them how they don't know. I've already told you this, Albert. What about the corner where the blood was? Did you clean that up, too? Okay, was that part of the cleanup? And that's fine if that was part of the rape cleanup. I mean, but was that part of the cleanup? Okay, okay now you're trying to go up. No, I'm trying to understand all of this. You never told me the rape wasn't true and the bang in your head wasn't true. You told me the bicycle wasn't true. You didn't tell me this part wasn't true. So did you clean up the corner too? Was that part of the cleanup? I mean, my God almighty, just listen to it. I mean, just pathetic, right? I mean, every excuse under the book, just the things he named off right there, the R cleanup, the this, the that. She would have had numerous innocent people in prison on this crime. Would have probably had Al himself or her own daughter in there before she would ever come clean or admit to this or whatever. You're not trying to be loving to me. I'm trying to find out what happened to my son. All that, all, everything else come, uh, is, is is part of the situation after we find Gannon, it, whatever we decide at that point. Something Gannon was. In the corner? I don't know where other would have been on the roof. Okay, keep going. I, I just, I, I'm gonna shut up because this is freaking. This is freaking me out. That right there, you're not trying to be loving to me. Now, this isn't a thing where he was calling her babe and she's like, don't do that or whatever. Um, and then you can see he's pandering to her because she'll go over this about wanting to bring, I want the family to be together and you to stand up for me and, you know, and all this stuff. And I remember Landon's there, so that's running all over her. What's interesting to me about this is that by doing this, it got her to the opposite end of where she wants to be. Whatever the reasons were that caused her to do this to Gannon, you can see what's important to her. Al doting over her, keeping Landon at bay away from whoever. You know, she just doesn't like Landon, right? But then this did the exact opposite. It's almost like getting thrown into the briar patch, right? This is exactly what she did to herself. But she's still wanting that. It's like she cannot understand that her actions have consequences. And it's almost like this is where I think she's more or less annoyed, you know, with like, oh, God, great. Now I have to still deal with the Ganon thing, you know, because I do think that whatever took place, it set her off and it triggered a series of events that got out of control. And the for and it basically something took place where she could not let him talk to her talk to his father right she couldn't let that happen she couldn't either let him be seen at school like something took place and it just got worse and worse and then the overkill set in i've already told investigators that okay, okay. all right well tell me because i don't know on this, uh, not the 
Now, this is a classic tactic by personality types this way. First of all, at the very end, she says where it's embarrassing to tell you. She's not wanting to tell him things about, I believe it was either her bleeding or the R that took, the alleged R that took place. Um, and she's saying it's because it's embarrassing. You know, and I'm like, girl, um, are you serious, right? But again, that's almost like this tactic of she knows that's not true. So that's a good way to just be like, mm, no, I'm not going to say that. Now, again, the, here's reality. You're trying to convince this man of something. He's wanting answers, but you're finding a manipulative way to not tell him the answers. Also bringing up the whole loophole again with the crime scene. Ill they illegally did this. They illegally did that. It's like, honey, do you think that they're just going to sweep this under the rug and be like, well, we didn't do this properly. We did find poor little Gannon, but you know what? Just let her go because we didn't read her her Miranda rights, you know, type situation, right? And I'm just like yeah, this is not the phone call to be having this conversation about something being done illegally or this or that. That's what it just doesn't sink in with her is like the people who care about Gannon are all concerned about finding him and she's concerned about building a defense. Listen, what I want is what I told you I wanted initially. I want our five people in our family, two dogs, Christmas presents... Yes, that's what I want, okay? And if this was, I'm just talking about that's the last time we were all together, happy, enjoying it, and that I can think of that was great. Walk a pickup? I'm just talking about good times in our lives. I said, I said, that's the last thing I can think of presents. What? That starts with you. That starts with you saying, I want my wife and my daughter here and, and Lena here. And we're and now this part clearly whoever's with him is telling him to feed into her narcissism and this whole thing of like you know i want christmas presents and this and all that kind of stuff i mean you know i had to burn his biscuits to say that right because you're talking to this woman who most likely killed your son right i mean well we know she did now but at that point doing that and having to manipulate information out of her to find your boy. I mean, it's disgusting. Now, do you see her kind of turn? Well, that starts with you. And notice the first things that come out of her mouth. You saying you lost your wife, your daughter, you know, did, you know all this. And then Gannon. And then she comes up with the thing. And we're going to find Gannon. And this is why I'm going to kind of circle back around to this thought process. When I sit here and think, what was she ultimately trying to pull off? Once this took place... You know, whether it was planned or not, or who knows, doesn't matter. The end result is the horror that took place on poor little Gannon. But regardless of how, the, like, the, the motivation in the beginning of, you know, whether it's spur of the moment or planned or whatever, um, this takes place. Now she's over here, you know, we'll find him, we'll find him. And that's where I'm thinking, okay, does she think she could pull this off? And the body would never be found and therefore you could never pin it on her so she could go back to just everything being back to the way it was, you know, of, oh, a big happy family. And I'm like, honey, I mean, do you think that's really what would happen? I mean, that's, you know, red flag number one. Uh, number two is I'm trying to imagine like, I mean, was there really a time like this with all of them? Because at this point, I mean, look at what's right beneath the surface with her, right? The realization of how off her rocker she is, not in the context that she doesn't know right from wrong, but in the context of being this type of person that we've listened to and witnessed during this trial in this case. So that part just runs all over me. So again, I just come back to that question of, you know, do we think that she was so confident she could talk her way out of it and do this and that, that she would be able to deflect guilt from herself and maintain her man and all this type of stuff? Um, or was she just running from the end of thing and she was just, you know, in a one long manic episode or something and just, you know, lying left and right. I wasn't trying to be calculating at all. Once we get to this stage, I'm curious to hear what you think down in the comment section. And as always, if you are still listening, drop some blue hearts down in the comment section for Mr. Gannon. And that's it. I appreciate you being here. And until we gather around my water bottle, soda, and the old cell phone, I'll see you soon.